and we're just about to be joined with Sean from In Malice's Wake uh, for an interview. So, yeah. hi, Sean. How are you going? G'day. How are you going, guys? Yeah. Good, thank you. Oh, sweet. Um, you're here right out of Melbourne, which is awesome. Um, you're playing the Brutality Festival um, this Saturday. How excited yeah. are you to be playing that festival? Oh, very, man. I mean, anyone that's seen the lineup yeah. will understand why. I think there's uh, over 30 bands and... Um, yeah, a lot of it's brand new stuff I've never seen before, but just a huge host of amazing headliners. It's like Cryptic, you know, Barbarian, Desecrator. Oh man, over 30 bands is going to be a, a huge day. Uh, who are the bands that you're most excited to catch? Because there are so many. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm um, sort of having a, a bit of a plan in my day. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> personally, I, I mean, I always love seeing Cryptic. They're pretty, pretty mind blowing. Um, Barbarian, I haven't seen for many years, and have really been making waves um, over the last few, so I'm pretty keen to see where they're at. Um, we've got Ruins playing at the, the Bendigo, and um, I've heard really big things about them, but also one of the bands I'm not very familiar with, um, as well as a few old favourites, Desecrator I'm a massive fan of, and um, and Alarum, of course, as well. Um, but yeah, Dead, Dead City Ruins is another that I've never seen and, and heard great things about, so... Um, yeah, while we're not playing, I'll be busy checking out quite a few other bands. It's going to be a great day. Yeah, awesome. It sounds like you're going to be very busy. Um, so, you guys haven't released anything since uh, 2011's um, highly regarded The Thrashing album. Um, and since then, you've had a massive lineup change, saying goodbye to two of your long term members, being guitarist Dave Graham and bassist Luke Blasso. Um, and welcoming Lee and Carl, of course. So, uh, have you found it's a different dynamic on stage with the two new guys? Or yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I can never speak highly enough of, of Dave and Luke. They were, they were like brothers to us, and we had plenty of good times with them. Yeah. Um, I think you know they sort of got a little bit tired with it all by the end, having done it for so long, and having um, Carl and Lee just joined recently has been a real shot in the arm. And these two guys are just incredible um of absolutely blown away from the start when we first got him in for audition everything just sort of gelled i felt like i've been playing with these guys for ages and uh they've got such huge energy on stage um both of them but especially carl we just come back from a show in in brisbane and uh he's got his wireless system i looked over and he's climbed his way up onto the stage and he was rocking out <laughs> it was put a put a massive smile on my face that's um uh, they sort of bring a, a different sound, uh, especially Lee, who's, who's quite a um, strong songwriter in his own right. So he's, yeah. he's brought a lot of riffs and things into the new songs that we're writing. Um, and his own lead style, of course. Uh, he's gone through and, and learned a lot of, of Dave's leads, but adapted them to his own playing style. And, and I just love what he's done with them. As you mentioned, you've been working on um, some new material. Um, yeah. What, what can we expect from the new material? Uh, I think we've just released, uh, we've just finished playing two of them yeah. live and um, personally I'm more excited about the, the most recent ones we've written there. Uh, it, it is quite different to my ears. Um, it's a lot more sort of uh, incorporated, a lot more tremolo picking, which we haven't done for years and, uh, and Mark's getting his head around a few blast beats, but the whole thing is a, is a lot more, um, it's, it's a lot heavier, it's a lot darker, which I know a lot of people say when they're talking about uh, new material but I mean this this really is um, just the the style of it it's still obviously our sound and, and my vocals down as they do but we've uh, really pushed it um, sort of in two different ways in, in one way it's, it's definitely a lot more extreme a lot more fast um, but also there's a, a heavy sense of melody that uh, maybe we didn't have as present on the fashioning album and um, uh, even the lyrics it's, it's the whole thing's quite quite dark and, and heavy and oh, we're never really a, never been a, a party thrash sort of band we take the, the music and the lyrical things quite seriously um, but the, the new material is exciting me and almost especially because it's, it's been so long and um, I'm just hanging to get into the recording studio and, and finish writing this thing because it's coming up great and that's wicked. I mean, got, speaking of new stuff, you guys uh, also have a live CV, CD DVD coming out in October that you just dropped the trailer for a couple of days ago. Um, so how did the idea for that actually come about and how was the whole process of kind of filming and going through footage and putting it all together? Yeah, we um, sort of had a look at our plans for this year and, and I, I suppose the big overall picture was we wanted to have this next album 
album written by December. Um, but we'd also thought it had been so long since we'd done a release, we, we really wanted to have something something to put out in the meantime to keep keep things fresh. And uh, we're sort of just chatting about our plans. We sort of thought originally, why don't we just do a live CD? It would just be a matter of recording a show that we do and then packaging it up and, and releasing it. Um, but the guys want to go one step further and, and do a DVD as well. And it was fairly simple. We got um, a couple guys on board to... Um, film the show that we did at the Bendigo and uh, they got nine cameras on board and we got uh, Chris from Monolith Studios to come in as well as Gary Kilby to um, capture the sound and I mean they had all the audio done a week after we finished the show we were blown away and, and it just sounds huge um, but we've decided to edit all of the, the footage ourselves so that's all come back looking incredible uh, we had a massive light show on, on the night as well but Probably most impressive was the crowd. We um, sort of are quite used to having very uh, energetic crowds, so they <laughs> really turned it on for that show. Uh, we had uh, GoPro strapped to people's heads, and I don't think there was barely a minute where we didn't have somebody jumping into the crowd. And it was uh, it was really quite, you know, easily one of the most insane shows I've ever played. Um, and it's sort of nice that it's been captured so well on, on video and in the sound. So at the moment we're editing it and uh, putting the special features together. And uh, this week I'll be doing the artwork for the front cover. So we're hoping to have it all, I guess, complete maybe in three to four weeks. And uh, we'll be releasing that in October. Yep, um, as you mentioned, you edited it yourself. And in the lead up, you did a heap of rehearsals. Was it important to make it absolutely perfect? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we... Uh, you've been doing this for a while and, and quite confident just in general playing shows but I suppose when you when you know the whole thing's being recorded and you're going to have to listen to this show you know, over and over again for the rest of your life um, we've, we really want to get it as right as it is possible to, um, uh, you know, when you when you're doing the performance so uh, I think it was two weeks out we, we booked in nightly rehearsals and, uh, and we really, really pushed it hard um, down at the, the Jam Hut in Preston they were great, they let us keep a room set up and uh, we were back there after work every evening and uh, you know, it was kind of tiring but when you're not actually setting up and packing up the rehearsal becomes a lot more fun and uh, we, we had a blast getting ready for it and we played a, a practice show in Geelong the night before and yeah, then the show come along and uh, really the first minute or two started and, and uh, even though we were quite fit and, and playing at our best all of that idea of uh, perfection sort of went out the window because the crowd was just bananas over the microphones getting pushed over, you know, leads are getting ripped out, my pedal board's getting stood on by the crowd and you know, we were so focused on, on having it all perfect but in the end it, it was just one of those wild, messy shows and to be honest I think it's all the better for it. I'd, I'd rather that live energy was captured than some kind of perfect uh, performance. Yeah, definitely. It's great to have that um, crowd interaction all the time and that's definitely something to look forward to. Um, so last week we were discussing uh, genre revolutions and yep. um, I suggested a thrash revolution. Are you guys are you guys going to be bringing that in? Well, uh, I don't know. It's sort of something that's been quite a big thrash revival over the last few years, really. Um, there's a heap of you know young up and coming thrash bands, yeah. and uh, my personal favourites are the, are the ones that don't sort of rehash what was done in the past, but they bring something new to the table. Um, and my my personal favourite of the of the newer thrash bands is a band called Vector. Um, they do a, a really hyper fast, um, you know, super technical but incredibly well written type of thrash metal, and to me it just sounds really unique while still, you know, it captures a lot of that feeling of the thrash in the good old days, but they've really um, made it their own, and, and they're the sort of bands especially that I love to hear. Yeah, awesome. Wicked, so you did say before how your DVD tour, uh, your DVD show was at the Bendigo, and obviously the Brutality Tour covers three stages across the Bendigo and the Tote, which are pretty important venues in Victoria, and you guys have been touring the circuit for over a decade now, so uh, what are some of your favourite venues to actually play in? Um, look, at, at the moment, I'd have to say the Bendigo. Yeah, we, we do a lot of our shows there, and 
and the staff are great to work with. It's easy to get to, and it's just the right size. I mean, if you've got over 100 people, it's a, it's a full room and a, and a great vibe. Um, that's probably my personal favourite, but um, as far as seeing uh, other bands and, and even playing out, I love the Evelyn Hotel as well. Um, we've had great times at the Northcote Social Club as well. I've really missed the art house since that closed. Um, that was a huge favourite of mine back in the day. Um, but yeah, also to see uh, international bands, my personal favourites, the, the Forum and uh, and Billboards, which has been renamed, I think now, Russell, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 170 yeah. Russell, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely the, the Bendigo, as far as small-scale venues, is, is my personal favourite. Yep, as you mentioned, the um, art house has closed down, and in recent years we've had a bunch of other venues closed down around Melbourne. Um, what, what do you feel about like the changing like, music scene? Yeah, uh, it's a sad thing because most of the time they're replaced by you know something that uh, doesn't have the same character and the same love in it. You know, the art house is a venue that you go to any weekend, and there'd be great bands playing, and you'd see the same people, and it was it was it was really fun, you know. And um, I think it was just another average pub these days and you know there's always threats that our, our favourite venue is going to get closed down and noise complaints and well, without knowing too much about it it sounds like the legislation make it very hard for these small live music uh, venues to, to keep operating it's uh, a really sad thing because live music is such a huge part of you know all of our lives here in, in Melbourne it's, it's, mm-hmm. I don't think we've got a, a scene like it anywhere else in Australia um, you know things are quite cool up in, in Brisbane, which is my other favourite place to play, but it, it's still, compared to here, we've really got a great thing going, and um, to see it threatened, you know, it's, it's a bit of a scary thing, and it'd be nice if, if they were supported, and, and it was a bit easier for live venues to, to thrive without having to fight. Yeah, that's exactly right. We kind of did bring it down to a low point, but that's like 100% true, because it is pretty sad when you see a lot of your favourite venues starting to close down but um to bring it kind of up to a high point you guys have been keeping busy over the last 12 months um so besides kind of prepping for the dvd and uh, you've been playing a bunch of shows and kind of getting around the country a little bit so what would you say is your highlight uh, so far going into this new oh. album recording oh look it's so far my highlight of the year is by far the um the legion the steel show that the one that we did for our our dvd recording that goes down in history is probably my favourite show that we've ever played it was it was that good <laughs> um, and I suppose the other highlight for me is just getting uh, Carl and Lee uh, on board in the band I haven't felt this excited or this passionate about what we're doing for a really long time and the, the new music's just writing itself it's all flowing and it's got me feeling so passionate about it again and uh, I really can't wait to get new material out cool. uh, thanks for chatting today Sean Oh, my pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank Anyways, you. Um, that was, of course, Thanks. Sean from In Miles's Wake. You can catch those guys at Brutality Festival on Saturday at the Bendigo and the Turret. And keep an eye out for their new material as well, because Sean's excitement makes us excited for what they've got prepared for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. No worries. Uh,